Yo, it's Sunday morning. It's time for breakfast. And after I've had breakfast, I'm gonna be heading over to the gym and having a run. Uh, at the moment, again, only running on a treadmill just to regulate speed, distance, not hurt myself. My knee playing up a little, but not so much that I can't run, although I'm not running as much as I would like to. I'm having to be responsible about it. Nevertheless, I'm gonna tuck into this, go have some fun, edit the rest of this video, and we'll have a look at what I've gotten up to for the rest of the week, kinda. Of. So once again, I rolled the dice on some pizza dough, and hey, look at that, it's squishy and airy, and why does this only work some of the time when I just do the exact same thing every time? I swear to God, I'm cursed. Now I would have filmed myself pressing the dough out, but uh, God, this stuff gets sticky. Uh, one of the main ingredients is basically just an entire, in my case, like an entire little bag sachet thingy, a gelatin, about 12, 12 to 14 grams. And yeah, it is like, look at that. That is like almost lifting off just for, on my finger. Uh, that's not because it's got too much water in it. That's just the gelatin. It's kind of crazy. So what I tend to do, varying on the recipe, is I will bake just the base on its own for about 10 minutes and then, then flip it over and uh, then put the toppings on and bake it for another 15. So you see here, after more like six or seven minutes, really, it's kind of getting enough crispy on top. So now this is the point where I make sure to um, emancipate it from this noisy ass paper. I did showcase this here pizza sauce in an earlier video and hang on and said I'd be using about a third of it per pizza. It's been more like a quarter so carb counts even lower than anticipated. Now add to this the uh, low amount of carbs in the uh, almond flour I'm using and basically these man I'm still just not over the fact that I can have pizza again. Just spread that the heck out like this like you really do not need much pizza sauce on a pizza uh like i can't i haven't even looked at the uh, jar to see how much this recommends using but i'm probably using way less than suggested you only need it to coat it a common mistake you might use when making pizza for the first time or first time in a while is to put way more sauce than this on and then all that happens once your cheese is melted is it just kind of slides around on the top like the cheese will float on the tomato sauce it's crazy once again i've just put some mozzarella and red luster in a blender mostly mozzarella get that on there and now here i've added a bit of mushroom and pepperoni now fun little life hack in case i've not shared this before but something you'll find with pepperoni is <clears throat> it'll kind of curl up at the sides and make a little pool of grease in the middle of each one so put a little bit of italian seasoning Less than that though, There's a, this is near the bottom of the uh, little jar thing here, so it's all kind of clumped up and coming out at once. Uh, so we can just pick some of this up and sprinkle it over the rest. But just a little bit of this on each slice of pepperoni will stop them from turning into like little grease puddles. Make them nice and crispy. You don't need much but just enough that they will like absorb a little bit of the fluid that comes out of the pepperoni as it as it bakes. And then I'll just put this back in the oven for another 12 minutes. Holy crap, this thing smells incredible. Oh, okay, so I may have cooked it for just a little too long, it's looking kind of burnt. But, you know, trial and error, the whole half bake the crust thing. Oh, actually it looks a lot better now that it's out of the oven. Dude, I can't freaking wait. Now, pizza by the slice is not really much of a thing in the UK. Typically, you just get a smaller pizza for yourself. But as has been mentioned previously, the calorie count of this stuff is kind of high. Its carb count is not exactly negligible either. Like, there's probably about 10 grams of carbs on this plate right now, which mostly acceptable for the diet I'm on. But again, I gotta be careful. That being said, these two slices will fill me right up. This pizza will stuff you full. Uh, pretty much the Black Tide Kitchen video itself said, said as much. It's actually kind of crispy on the bottom because uh, I did that little flipperoo thing on it. Um, obviously, just going to bake it for just slightly less time next time. But as I say, if you're ever doing the Black Tide Kitchen pizza, I strongly recommend this little variant on it that I'm doing. Now, what measures the worth of a pizza? Well, to me, 
it's whether it's any good cold. And this one is, this one wins. I love this pizza. Thank you again, Black Tie Kitchen. Now, some of you know I'm quite fond of my chaffles. Uh, this one's had a teaspoon, a tablespoon rather, a psyllium husk thrown into it. Uh, so one egg, 125 grams or about four and a half ounces of mozzarella. Uh, a tablespoon of psyllium husk thrown into a little blender and then just made in a waffle iron. And look, it makes it like real firm, real crunchy. Uh, and this is gonna be my uh, dinner of work tonight with some cheese and salami. And yeah, of course, the elephant in the room, some uh, almond flour muffins. I'm just currently uh, grilling the sides off before I fry some eggs and bacon. Yo, it's a surprisingly calm day, so I'm walking home from the gym. I uh, had to cut there, let some people walk past me so I wouldn't uh, you know, have their faces in Charlotte all over the internet without their permission. Didn't want that. But yeah, um, so, as I say, I just made the executive decision to run a little slower and my knees are feeling much better for it and I'm still feeling fine. I had a good burn, I had a good cardio session and it worked out ultimately. Um, I think that's just what I'm gonna have to keep doing, keep running slow, as slowly as possible while still actually having fun doing it so as not to like keep re-injuring this freaking knee. But I'm sure I can get it right. So, having returned home, on the way back, I picked up this grenade carb killer bar. We'll see about that. Uh, it says high protein, low sugar, and it does say that of the 18 grams of carbs that are in this, only 15 grams are polyols. So, oh, sorry, only three grams of them are actual carbs because 15 grams of them are polyols. Uh, the sweetener in question is maltitol. Now, I kept hearing bad things about maltitol, and the first time I did keto a few years ago, I avoided it, but this time I haven't, not really, haven't had anything bad happen. Jenny would really, really be surprised if we just coated with this stuff, which also has maltitol, believe it or not. Um, so again, the reason you can have polyols when you're on keto is your body straight up does not metabolize them. They pass right through you, but they pass right through you. Like wicked quickly at that. So I'm gonna try to be careful about eating this. Last time I had one of these was years ago and I thought it was gross, but you know, I really fancied the supposed contents. And it's one of those things I don't get to eat at the moment. It's like fudge, caramel, that sort of thing. You know, it doesn't taste anything like fudge or caramel or nougat or anything else. It's almost kind of salty actually, but it doesn't taste awful. It tastes nothing like what the package describes. But I'm not completely hating it. Oh well. Also, another thing I uh, was missing was potato chips. Still haven't quite had the best substitute to those. I did say I was going to try and do a lump of the uh, almond flour fry pastry stuff and make those in a fries. That's potato chips. But these nuts come in salt and vinegar flavor now. I don't know how long they've been coming in salt and vinegar flavor, but when I went through a pack of these last night, yeah, it was just as good as having salt and vinegar potato chips. So I'm happy with that. 2.2 uh, grams of carbs per bag. So... Really nothing, nothing serious. Uh, the snack packs are kind of expensive compared to just buying a really, really big bag of peanuts. However, uh, when I buy a really big bag of peanuts, the first few I have are crunchy and then no matter how much I try and seal up the bag, the rest of them just go soft and they're not as nice. So I think I'd rather just pay extra and have a few bursts of crispy ones. And again, it helps me with my portion control, which is another thing I'm not always super careful about. So one more thing, I uploaded this week's weigh-in as a short yesterday and then made a community post out of it twice and as far as i could tell it wasn't being shown to anyone so i guess i'll just roll it ah <sighs> uh, down another pound baby and there you go that's how i'm doing still going see you soon